So today I want to take a look at some of the built-in mathematical functions that vPython has to offer. Um, we're going to do this by graphing these functions, kind of like you do in um, Algebra 2, pre-calculus, um, when you're first learning about these functions. Um, we're going to do this using the G-curve object. So again, this is a, um, a graphical object that represents a connected series of data points. And we're going to use the uh, for loop here to increment x from negative 3 to 3. And so we're going to get uh, several points along the x-axis. And then the, along the y-axis, we're going to get the function that we're looking at. And the first function we're going to examine is the absolute value function. This is a pretty well-known function. Uh, it's the function that returns the positive version or the non-negative version of whatever number you input. Um, so everything to the right of zero, it just returns the same number. So the absolute value of two is two. But everything to the left, it returns the opposite. So the absolute value of negative two is two. Absolute value of negative 1.5 is 1.5. Um, so absolute value is pretty useful. It's especially important in programming whenever you need to make sure that your number is positive. Um, let's see. Uh, vPython also knows what the square root function looks like. Um, let's leave in the negative. Let's see what happens if I try to give it a negative number. Okay, so it didn't complain at me. It just didn't produce any results. So of course the square root function looks like a sideways parabola. It's of course giving me nothing for negatives since it doesn't, um, I don't think it takes the square root of a negative number. Will it return to me i if I ask it for square root of negative one? Let's find out. I was gonna do a video on complex numbers later. Let's see what it gives me here. Okay, it gives me NAN, so I'll have to do some uh, some freshening up on how um, vPython handles complex numbers. That'll be a future video. Um, of course, there's something more versatile than that. You can also just use powers. So for example, you can do double asterisk to do to the one-half power, and you get the same graph because uh, x to the one-half power is the same thing as square root of x. But that also means you've got access to other powers too, right? So I can do the cube root of x by doing 0 0.3 repeating in the um, exponent there. Cool, so here we've got the cube root of x. It's still not liking me in the, uh, in the negative x range. That's okay. Um, and then, of course, you can use that for um, powers greater than one as well. So the double asterisk is your um, to the power of. There we go. There's a nice parabola there on both sides. Uh, let's see. Uh, it, of course, also knows your trigonometric functions. So let's try sine of x. Now, of course, the question you always want to ask anytime you're working with a computer and you're dealing with trig functions is whether it's working in radians or degrees. So let's find out whether it's working in radians or degrees here. So here's my sine curve. This is what I expect a sine curve to look like. Sine of zero is zero, no matter whether you're working in um, radians or degrees. But let's take a look at where this maximum happens. This maximum happens at 1.5, which is about pi over two. And then it's going down to zero as I get closer to three. So if I go a little bit farther, I can get to pi and I'll be at zero. So this thing's default is to work in terms of radians. It, it's, it's written by mathematicians, so it involves radians. Um, so let's see, if, so if I wanted this to be in degrees, I've got a couple options. One is I could explicitly perform the uh, conversion or I can use a built-in conversion function. If I use radians of x, then it assumes that I'm inputting x in radian, excuse me, it assumes I'm putting x in degrees and I'm getting out radians. So you have to use the function of the thing you want to convert it to, not the thing you want to convert it from. So let's hit control two. And of course, sine of x is a very different graph when you graph it in terms of degrees because it's not gonna hit that maximum until uh, until pi over two, until 90. Uh, so we would need to expand the range of our uh, for loop here. Let's go negative 90 to x, let's go all the way negative 180, not 1800. Uh, let's go negative 180 to 180. Because now I'm in degrees, it's got a different range for the function. There we go, there's our sine curve, but notice our x values are now very different because we're in degrees. So that's important to note that this thing uh, works in radians, not degrees. Um, let's go back over to uh, more reasonable numbers here. Uh, let's make that a 3.0. There we go. Um, so we can get rid of the radians here. And then of course I can do the same thing. I, uh, it also knows cosine, control two, 
There's our cosine curve starting out at one and then dropping down. Um, it also knows the tangent function. Cool, so there's your tangent function. Um, of course, tangent gets you this asymptote at pi over two and negative pi over two. You notice it doesn't go all the way up to infinity because remember, this is not a graph of the function per se. This is a graph of different data points on the function. So if you look over here, um, you can get this, uh, this jaggedness because we're going between different points. If I wanted to smooth that out, or if I wanted more of this asymptote, I would have to decrease my step size over here in the for loop. Let's decrease that by a factor of 100. And of course, now we get something much smoother. Our asymptotes go higher, a little bit lower over here. Not much of a change. Oh, oh wait, yeah, I forgot to look at the vertical scale. Yes, our vertical scale has definitely changed over here. Um, so yeah, that just gets you a smoother uh, graph there by changing the, uh, the step size in the for loop. Of course, what would the sine, cosine, and tangent be without their inverse functions? Um, so vPython also knows the arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Um, it knows them as a sine, a cos, and a tan. So again, this is the function that says, give me the angle whose sine is the value x. Now the arc sine and arc cosine have this limitation that they, they can't go beyond negative one and positive one because sine and cosine oscillate between negative one and positive one. It only takes an input of, of that range. So let's not bother with messing up the program by going outside that range. Let's hit control two. Here you go, here's your arc sine equation. So in other words, if I wanna know what angle will give me an arc sine, excuse me, a sine of 0.8, uh, from here I can see that that is uh, about 0.86 something. Cool. And then of course I can do the same thing. I can get the arc cosine, control two. It looks similar to the arc sine. Um, these functions, the, I've always found the arc sine and the arc cosine to be more useful than they are beautiful. Like these are not terribly interesting looking functions. I've always felt like. Um, it'll also do arc tangent for you. It'll give you the, um, the angle whose tangent is uh, whatever the thing is you're looking for. Of course, arc tangent, uh, doesn't have that uh, domain restriction. I can go out as far as I want with the arc tangent because it's going to approach uh, negative pi over two and pi over two in a horizontal asymptote. This is an interesting function to me. I've never really cared much for the arc sine or arc cosine. Now, an interesting thing about the arc tangent function in vPython is that there are two versions. One is the regular arc tangent, the way your calculator probably does it. The other is this a tan two, where you can add in two arguments. Um, the idea here is that you're you're looking at a right triangle and you're looking at the opposite and the adjacent. And here you can input two arguments and it will perform the division for you. So here I can get the arc tan of basically two divided by x. And of course I get a similar looking thing. It's flipped around because my x is on the denominator now. But it's nice because it handles those edge cases of getting close to 90 degrees a little bit better than the regular arctangent function does. Now, if you remember from a high school trig class, um, sine, cosine, and tangent are not the only trig functions. There are also these weird things called the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. I will be completely honest with you. In my 20 years of working with physics, I have used these functions maybe once or twice. Uh, but if you wanted those, um, vPython does not have them built in. You would have to define a new function for those. So for example, you could define the secant as being one divided by the cosine of x. So if I wanted secant, I would use secant here. I'd have to define it on my own. Um, I can, but once I've defined it, I can use it here. Hit control two. And there you go, there's the secant function. And then if you wanted the cosecant, you could define another function because you can define as many functions on your own as you want cosecant of x return one over sine of x, and then if you wanted the tangent, the cotangent, uh, you could return one over tangent of x. And it's just referencing those functions that it already knows to give you uh, the functions that you want. There we go. And of course, if you wanted other fancy functions, like if you wanted sine squared, cosine squared, et cetera, you can define those as, as additional functions as well, however you like. Um, I have another video that I'll link to um, about using this function definition. It's pretty straightforward. 
Okay, I think that's uh, plenty of time for today. Uh, next week, we will pick up with some additional built-in functions, taking a look at exponentiation and logarithms. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.